Hello there and welcome to a customer build. Uh, this one's a little bit different um, because the customer had some parts that he wanted to use so I'll just give you a bit of a background. Um, this uh, customer, name's Kyle, he had a water cooling PC and he uh, the sun unfortunately pulled a pipe and damaged pretty much all the parts apart from a graphics card uh, which was an uh, Asus Strix 970 uh, for gig so we went out and bought this I think I believe from Curry's so what he wanted I mean the specs on this it's a, uh, it's a Skylake uh, motherboard with an i5 um, we did the R4 and he just puts his 917 in there. So what he requested was to get a build, maybe taking the processor from there and put on this motherboard. But he changed his mind because he bought a 4790i7, uh, which is an 1150 socket, not a 1151. So this PC is mainly for gaming, so great processor, four core with hyper threading, 3.5 gigs boost to 4 gigs. Unfortunately, it's not a K, um, so you can't really overclock it. So, the job for me was to take some parts from this, and what I took from it was the graphics card. I had a uh, Western Digital 1 terabyte of blue hard drive and the DVD drive everything else out the source. It gave me a budget. The budget was around £450 and he wanted specifications was a sly rig uh, for gaming. So this is what I've come up with. So the case that you're looking at the moment, excuse the mess at the back doing some building work, um, is a Corsair's 800D that's been modified um, slightly, not too massively. This is a water cooling case, really, but he wanted an air cooled case because his previous uh, rig, his son pulled a pipe and destroyed pretty much all the parts. So I think he's, he's just traumatized. So he requested an air cooled. So, one reason I got this case one, it's a full tower. Two, if he changes his mind in the future, there's plenty of room um, to put radiators and his semi modular as well, so this can be adapted. Now, this was bought second hand. The person had already made some modification, but modifications that you can see is virtually been, the front bezel has been wrapped in carbon and a window has been installed, so in case they want a reservoir. Um, probably recognize that. There's another bezel that was 3D printed. And that's some modifications in the case. That was it. Spec wise, on the system, uh, just give you. We firstly went for uh, Asus Maximus um, uh, V7 Rager motherboard. It's a great motherboard, slide board. We've got another Asus Strix um, 970 uh, cooler. Uh, you wanted to use the reference cooler, so we just slightly upgraded that to a Cooler Master, and he had provided a fan, but. If this thing is too loud. Um, after he gave me the specs, he also had a few extras. He wanted some lighting, so that's been installed. So, I'll give you a breakdown. So, motherboard 1150 motherboard, slide board, uh, two PSI express lanes. Uh, you've got two cards, everything's air cooled. Uh, the RAM is a Corsair Vengeance uh, DDR3, 16 gigs, so two. Uh, two sticks of eight and that's at 2400 megahertz the motherboard supports that and beyond uh, but that's running at 2400 um, power supply we got the Corsair's RM 650 now a lot of people absolutely go mental when they see a power supply that's less than a thousand watts to provide power for two graphics cards well, I can tell you, the graphics cards, especially the, this custom PCB, is a phenomenal graphics card. This is not a reference NVIDIA card, this is a custom PCB 
graphics card. The cooler is absolutely amazing. The fans don't kick in until the card reaches 60 degrees, so it's completely silent. Um, you only need a one eight pin, and that draws around 13 amp from the 12 rail. And there's two. Well, that power supply, the 650 watt RM, actually has over 50 amp on the 12 rail. So a stupid amount of headroom. Okay, uh, because the other power, the that's drawing from that power supply, but the motherboard Asus motherboards are super efficient. The 4790K has got a, I think it's 88 watt um, TDP. The operating system inst installed on a ScanDisk uh, SSD, 240 gig Extreme Pro, and he's got an external a storage drive which is in there, um, which is a Western, uh, wing, Western, <laughs> uh, Western Digital uh, one terabyte blue. Cooling wise, now this case, that's the only thing, because I love the 900D, got two of them, and the cooling, phenomenal. But this does not have any fans. So here, we actually have hot swappable hard drives. So SSD is in here, the uh, one terabyte is in here, got two spare ones, plus at the bottom, there, another button at the bottom is the Q control unit as seen there at the moment. But no fans uh, drawn air in. So when I came to organize this in case of airflow, behind here you've got a fan pushing air through the hard drives just to keep them cool. Uh, so the only way to get air in was to get a fan drawing air from the bottom. And don't worry, there is a filter, so no dust is going to come up. That's come straight through up, through the cooler, exhaust, and you've got two fans. You've got a space for a third one, but it's overkill with three fans uh, at the top. So overall, you've got two 120mm Corsair fans, one, um, 120 on the rear, and 140 um, at the bottom. All right, and then you've got another one. 140 in there. So the additional um, request was lighting. Now this case is a hit and miss with lighting just because it's because of the way it's been built. So we've got a Hue Plus two channel unit with four lighting strips, one at the bottom, one at the side. Now this one here, you'll see why is that there, not under. Well, you'll see later on when I put the panel, the reason why. Now I haven't fixed these permanently because the owner, Kyle, might want to relocate them, put them at the back or whatever. The only one that I put permanently is the one at the side. So we're going to turn this boy, bad boy on, and So at this moment in time, the uh, CAM software is on Spectrum, so CAM software is a bit of a light show. Um, so that is temporarily just being booted up um, on, my, uh, on my screen. But I spent quite a lot of time tweaking the fan profiles to ensure this is a silent operation. So. <sighs> password then. So it's just going to go in there. So he wanted Windows 10. I personally hate Windows 10. 64-bit. Uh, he already had the operating system so I installed it for him. Also sorted out um, some benchmark um, software. All restore points, uh, antivirus, it's, it's all done. So. Um, this boosts to uh, the CPU uh, boosts to four gigs, uh, but when it's not on load, it turns it down. Um, if we go into the fine profiles, and so the system is running at the moment idling. 
if you can hear that. But we'll go closer so you can actually hear. So when it's idling, it automatically, instead of so it turns fans down because there's no need to have all the fans and the noise is kept to a minimum. But the louder the system will go, with a lot of tweaking on the RPM and voltages, I also got some reduces. That's just as loud as it's going to get. Okay. Now this has been set up so I moved up a profile that I made. And that is as quiet as it will go. The two fans at the top, which is acne exhaust, are just 700 RPM depending on the temperatures. That will automatically adjust with the temperature. So if the CPU increases by 1%, 1 degree, sorry, it'll increase by 1%. The fans on the GPUs are not even running. And the reason for that, the GPUs do not, fans do not kick in until we hit around 60 degrees. So if I bring in MSI after burner, and at the moment, graphics card one is at 34, and graphics card two is at 33. All right, I also have done some profiles on this, um, so I've got a standard profile, a modified profile, so 140 on a core with 400 on the memory and that's fans are 50% then if I want slightly bit more uh, 145 on the core with 145 memory and the final one is with fans are 100% uh, 150 on the core and 450 on the memory uh, the uh, GDDR5 memory now this will ensure that the car will boost to 4 1,335 megahertz on the actual core itself and the memory of running just I think is below 8 gigs so a uh, very nice car to work with um, I've done a few uh, benchmarks on it so we might as well run one now uh, so have a look um, so before I do that I just show you a quick benchmark the difference when people have not upgraded to an SSD so he's got a Western Digital on the speed partition so to give you a, what we want is just a sequence read really so and that is a read and write okay on a normal Standard hard drive, which is quite decent, so about 150 mega, um, megabytes a second. Okay, so I'm still going. Now, if you upgrade, I'll just support that. And if you go and upgrade to an SSD straight away. 473 on the right and 507 now these are normally rated I think it's 500 550 but depends on the motherboard and the uh, actual speed port SATA 6 uh, I think it's 60 by a second on this board so that just gives you an idea of the difference between a normal hard drive so operating system wise that will load faster any games will eliminate uh, loading times quite a bit so that's hard drives uh, we'll go into IDA. Now, unfortunately, I can't really 
uh, if I've got the CPU because uh, it's locked. But we're just going to benchmark the memory. So the DDR3 memory um, is running at 2400 megahertz, and that's pretty much at the top. Uh, so it should be fine. So you can see there. So that boosts straight to 4 gigs and a dual channel 2400. No problems at all. Um, let's go. Memory right. For me, again, just be slightly behind a 5820K on a quad. Which is the quad, the DDR42100. So not too shabby at all. Um, the actual uh, temps. So for a quick look, I'm on silent. Give you an idea. So the motherboard, 27 degrees. Uh, the CPU is 34, the GPU 36 and 42, RAM is 51. And give you an idea, current. See that? That's an idle. 